Hi guys, and welcome back to the Monster Cast podcast. I'm your sexy host and chocolate rice extraordinaire, Mason Paul. Along with me today, we actually have a picture of Cam. We've undergone some temporary budget cuts, and Cam is helping actually get trucks ready for Ada, Oklahoma this weekend. Uh, we couldn't exactly have him on. I'm not exactly sure if he's going to be on at all today, but we're just going to wing it. Do it just uh, one man and uh, the interviewer today. Hang on. I'm actually hearing something. Hello? Oh, well, look at that. What's up, buddy? Uh, really? That's, w- that's what I'm doing? That picture? Yeah. I- it was the best picture I had to cover for you. Well, I didn't know I sent that picture to you, but uh, apparently I did. Sorry about that. But uh, I'm actually live in a parking lot, and I don't know if I got the camera in the right spot. But as you can see, we're actually tiring up Redneck Road Trip right now for a display in Ada, Oklahoma. And look who I have with us. I have the world-famous driver of Jekyll and Hyde, Austin Mitt. Wow. Hey, guys. So dreamy. So cool. He is. He is. So, all right. You're going to tell me, Mason, my camera in the right spot? Yep. You're good for me. But uh, speaking about Ada, we will, of course, be seeing Ada and all of everybody at Two Extreme this weekend. Be sure to tune in and uh, come to Ada, Oklahoma. And make sure to tune with us on Friday when we unveil the new Jacqueline Hyde and the brand new Wood Finish Iron Outlaw. We will also yeah, be gonna... seeing Monster X. What's that? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, and I'll let you finish, and then I'll ramble. Yeah, no problem. We'll also be seeing Monster X at Hartford, South Dakota. Catch up with all the guys from Bottle Monster there. I've already actually seen Too Tall and uh, Dawson. They killed it last weekend, so I'm really interested to see what they're going to bring to the table this weekend. See how they're going to do it against old Mike and Paul. Also, in sim racing news, be sure to tune in to ROR MJL. Their YouTube channel at 7 Eastern on July 3rd for the Extreme Truck World Tour. So let's say this stuff back here. 24 of the best virtual Munch Truck competitors are going to go all out for the craziest track ever constructed. With that, uh, you said you had some words to say, Cam? Well, actually, I'm going to have to walk away. It's a little loud over here. But, uh, yeah, Friday, we're going we're gonna to try and do something live from the track Friday. Like I said, unveil the trucks. I don't know what time. Depends what time trucks up down. Sorry about the noise, everybody. But, uh, yeah, we're going to try and do something. So we'll, we'll see if it works. Uh, if nothing else, if nothing else, we'll post pictures and stuff of the trucks and do something. But uh, anyway, what else you got, Mason? Anything? Uh, no, it's actually going to go ahead and bring in our guest for this evening, Mr. Alex Blackwell. Now it's done. He's up first in Wolverine. Out of the box and check this out. He pogos it, lands it on the back. Impressed with those who have really risen to the top and handled it right now. No one more impressive. Than one judge scores bonus time. He can add up to five seconds. Oh, my. And with this field, this will be clutch. I'm going to... Alex Blackwell, what's going on, my man? Hey, buddy, how you doing? We need to get you a helmet, Cam, because I'm tired of looking at your chest. Oh, is my, my camera not in the right spot? How's that? Is that better? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of chest. Oh, you know? no, that's better. I can see your pretty face. So, all right, so first let's talk about how's quarantine been for Mr. Alex Blackwell and the Blackwell gang? Uh, it's It's been all right. You know, it's uh, it's something we're all going through, and – you know, uh, doing a lot of stuff around the house and just trying to keep to myself and and uh, stay away from everybody. Well, so 
everybody knows, you know, you haven't you haven't been driving the last couple of years. You've moved over onto the side of, you know, you're a guy that you, you've built a lot of the new trucks for Feld over the last few years, and I've seen you at shows dealing with the EFI system. But before we get to all that, let's talk about how Alex Blackwell got started in the Moss truck business years ago with, like, the slip goes and stuff. Well, uh, back in the early 2000s, I worked in a shop in Pennsylvania that did uh, electrical work, and I helped uh, them de design a rear steer motor that spins three times faster than a standard motor. So uh, Andy Slifko was, you know, real close to me, six miles away. He said, I want to put one on my truck, so he did. And uh, it started from there, and in 2004, I went with him to Bloomsburg Jamboree, which was only 18 miles from my house. I... Uh, I conned him in to let me drive the truck, not in a competition, but just like going in a straight line, you know, something, you know, everybody wants to try and do. And I got to do it and I got out of the truck and I'm like, I need to do this. Like, this is fun. A um, couple months after that, I met Randy Brown in Baltimore, Maryland. And then uh, about 60 days after that, I quit my job in Pennsylvania that I worked at for almost 14 years. And I moved to North Carolina to work for Randy. That was in 2004. And, I never looked back. I've been here ever since. So you're with Randy, you know, and obviously the pure adrenaline truck at the time. And sorry about the noise. If you can't hear me, but how did it, I mean, did you drive pure adrenaline for him or did you drive a second truck for him or how did that work? No, when, when I, when I ran into Randy, he was driving a grave digger and his second truck was pure adrenaline. Uh, but when I came into the scene, uh, he actually sold that chassis and then he got another chassis, which was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle um, from Clear Channel at the time, I believe it was. Uh, and then I, he's like, hey, I got another truck. Do you want to drive it? I'm like, okay, twist my arm. So he put an old 79 Ford LTD out in the farm field after they just picked all the corn. And I hit it three times. And the next day we loaded trucks and we went to Birmingham, Alabama. Well, now... Uh, we always do a segment on here with kind of talk about our guests with, Chris, with a young man by the name of Christopher Allen and the Allen family. And they do our fun fact of the week about our drivers. So why don't we go ahead and play Christopher's clip, Mason? Hi, Monster Truck fans. It is I, Christopher Allen, the Monster Truck Guru, returning for another episode of Monster Truck Fact of the Week. This edition is about Monster Jam veteran Alex Blackwell. Alex got started crewing and driving with the Slifco family namely Eradicator, before joining Randy Brown's team to drive Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. From there, he finally joined the big leagues that is Monster Jam. Not long after, Alex was granted a seat in Captain's Curse, the 2007 World Finals Freestyle Championship truck which had been driven by Pablo Huffaker. Over time, Alex became the signature driver of the captain, making numerous World Finals appearances. In 2017, Alex joined the then brand new Team Megalodon. Currently, he drives Pirate's Curse, a 3D successor to the captain on international tours. Alex has had several great racing runs at the World Finals throughout his career. In 2008, his very first outing with the truck, he went to the semifinals, did one better going into the finals against Max D the very next year. And in his first outing with Team Megalodon at the event, 2017, went to the quarterfinals. We sincerely hope you enjoy these videos, Monster Truck fans. Please like Monster Truckin' with Jim and Chris on Facebook and Instagram for loads of awesome Monster Truck show coverage all around the West. Please like this page for new episodes. And remember, Monster Trucks forever! Kind of amazing what he knows about your life, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, it's pretty crazy, you know. He 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 nailed it to a T. Well, so now let's let's talk about the move from Randy Brown's team. I mean, you're driving Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle for him. How did you end up at Feld? Uh, well, it was a uh, you know summertime for Randy at that time was uh, kind of slow for the second truck, and then you know uh, Clear Channel at that time, which it's Feld now. We know uh, they were going overseas and they needed help and. Randy said to me, he goes, do you mind going over there? I said, absolutely not. So in 05, I went over uh, 
I went over in July and I didn't come home till <laughs> September. I, I had a little bit of a different accent than I have now and I uh, had a great time. I didn't get to drive. I just crewed and, and did a lot of the display work. Um, but then, you know, 06 came around. I did the first quarter for Randy. And again, it got slow come summertime. So I went overseas again. And then when it slowed down, I came home. And in between all that, I met John Zimmer. And when I came home from the, the Europe tour in 06, I needed some work because Randy wasn't busy. And I actually went up to Vermont and helped John and his buddy Mike uh, put roofs on houses, you know, on the side of cliffs. It was it was so crazy what we were doing. Um, stayed busy with him. And then in 07, um, I started with Feld. Uh, I moved, uh, you know, over closer to the shop and uh, got to see the uh, bulldozer at that time. And I uh, was teamed up with Chad Tingler. And then it was on from there. Now, so when I met you, you were behind the wheel at Captain's Coast. And you really took that identity on. I mean, you were you were rocking it. You and Howie, I mean, you came on like a like a wildfire, and just never looked back. And I mean, how did it feel to finally get you know your own identity when you you know bulldozer been driven, Guy Wood, Tom Mintz, so, you know a bunch of other people, but to get your own identity with Captain Curse and run with that. Oh, it was great. You know, it. it I like the truck. I like the old school look. Uh, it sort of fit me. Um, the cab was really small, and you know, as you know, I'm I'm you know, not that tall, let's say. So it was, uh, it was neat to have my own thing. Uh, I had Howie come on. He actually started with another team. Uh, Mark Cole was on my tour or team with me. Uh, he actually got hurt and Howie uh, just got to California. He drove all the way out there, you know, three, four days of driving. Uh, he got there and Mike Wales uh, put him on a plane and sent him to me. And then he stayed with me for uh, nine years. So uh, everybody said I was hard to work for, but I guess that old man just either liked me or just liked getting punished one or the other. Yeah, I mean, you two you two are a hell of a married couple. I mean, a lot like another guy, driver and crew guy. I know they've been together forever and can't seem to separate no matter how hard I try. But, I mean, so with Captain's Curse, I mean, obviously you went to the World Finals one of the, you know multiple, multiple times in that truck and you're one that always surprised me, you know, like you and Lindsey Wink were always the two. I kept waiting that this was going to be your year. This was going to be your year. I mean, is that one of the one regrets you have to this point? If you never got to win that trophy? Uh, well, you know, to say I don't want to win, I'd be lying to you. I wanted to win it, but I wanted to win it fair and square. And, um, you know, I came really close and uh, I'm – you know, first year out, I was in the semifinals and then go to the finals the second year. And I mean, the next best thing is win. And so if, if that's what I, you know, have to leave with, that's what I leave with. You know, I had a good time and, you know, Vegas is fun. World finals is amazing. And, you know, who knows if there will be another time. I don't know. We don't know what's happening with the pandemic stuff. And uh, we'll just take it one day at a time and, and enjoy life as we go. Well, and, and, and obviously, you know, when we talk about the World Finals, we have to talk about, you know, the, the rollover, the, the famous one. You know, I mean, I, I know there's certain things you don't want to talk about or can't talk about, but what, what happened? What caused that? Uh, well, at, at the, the final turn, you know, so as a racer, as a motocross driver, rider, um, you know, whenever you go to a stadium or a track, you always – I always was taught, you know, if, if you're doing these big jumps, you have to, if something happens, you have to commit to, this is what you do. You dump the bike, you save whatever you can. Uh, so I never really walked the track to look at jumps because I, I never really planned out my run. I always walked the track to see if, Hey, if something happens, where do I ditch the truck? Uh, and that's honest God's truth. I, I do it everywhere I go. And, you know, I was on a rail that year. I went to the finals. I don't think I had but one stadium show all year. I had nothing but arenas. Uh, and like it was four or five show weekends. So I was tuned into my truck. Uh, the truck was, I believe, built in like 2001. Um, it was fairly old. It was C14. Uh, it was rebuilt a ton of times. Uh, I think I ended up calling it C14 and three quarters after a while because it was redone that many times, you know. Um, at the last turn when I knew I had to leave off and turn the wheel or, or hit the brake, there was nothing there. Uh, so 
I committed to roll the truck. Um, I did not hit any jump with the truck to make it roll. I turned all the wheels as far as I could just to get it to slow down. In my opinion, I thought that was the best thing that worked or would work. Um, and thankfully, that's, uh, you know, it's it worked out. And as you've seen from the next year, they added more safety barriers. And of course, from that, uh, we also did multiple upgrades to the trucks uh, throughout across, uh, you know, the board to make it all better. Uh, so uh, the, I don't know, uh, to me, it was the right thing to do at this spur of the moment. Um, I'm sure people always have their way of saying, you know, oh, why don't you do this or that? Well, I chose what I did. And thankfully, I thank God every day that, uh, you know, it came out the way it did. And, and we all went home afterwards. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was a cool parking spot. I mean, nobody else was there. I mean, you're, you're just making your, your presence known. So, I mean, it, it, it looked cool. And yeah, you, like could, you, said, you could so ask we, Bob Quinn uh, when he got to me. Uh, he kept asking me, am I okay? And the only thing I was worried about was everybody else. Um, and until he answered me is is when I start breathing again, you know, because uh, that's the worst thing to go through. Uh, you know, it, it, uh, motorsports are dangerous. And, of course, you never think of it until something happens. And that was my uh, uh, brush with it. And uh, – I hope it don't ever happen again, but you know, of course, that's how things get better and better, and and here we are today. Absolutely. All right, so we'll move past that. But yeah. So let's talk about. I mean, so then you went on to Megalodon. I mean, was so did they just did Captain Curse just run its course, and it was time to try something new, and and so what what put you behind the wheel of Megalodon? So uh, the kind of funny story. It, it didn't just go right to Megalodon. Uh, in between. All that, uh, up to that point, I was in 20 different trucks. So um, it was, it's crazy to think about it. I, Frank, I'm up to 27 or 28 right now. Uh, Frank Kremel is uh, higher than me. And um, with me being full time, when they needed somebody, they threw me in a truck. You know, uh, I could tell you one time uh, when we did, you know, English Town, New Jersey Speedway, and then we did Hagerstown and then Bloomsburg. And then back to uh, English Town, and then down to Sunrise, Florida. Uh, I actually drove like seven different trucks in nine days because I did English Town, then I did uh, uh, Bloomsburg Jamboree, then I went to Hagerstown, Maryland, back to English Town. I went to Sunrise, Florida, and the very next Monday, they put me on a plane and I drove Monster Mutt Dalmatian over in Europe. So it was kind of a, a crazy deal. Um, I got to drive a bunch of different trucks and, uh, you know, teamed up with a bunch of good guys and, and gals. Uh, so, uh, it went to, I was in curse for nine years and then all of a sudden they're like, okay, you know, it's going away. It's, it's been around the, you know, one of the longest besides, I think, well, Gravedigger of course, and Max D, but, uh, Superman, I think was the other one that was around a long time. And, um, they're like, dude, we're going to do this. So we, they put me in Wolverine. I was in it in one year and they brought Captain's Curse back, but it was black. So that was kind of cool to do something different. And that lasted about nine months. And then it went, you know, it was, it turned into something else. So um, Megalodon was kind of cool. Uh, uh, I was teamed up with Gary Porter that year, the first year driving it and uh, being with him and he's, he's a heck of a driver. He, he's so knowledgeable, knowledgeable. I learned a lot of stuff from him um, and we had a good time. So um, you know, I, I just want to drive. It really doesn't matter to me what the name is on the truck. You always make it what you make it. I, I mean, I don't care if it was pink. I drive it. Don't matter to me. Well, so now we actually get, we're going to have Gary Porter on Sunday. Oh, so awesome! I need, I need the best Gary Porter story. I, I need the best story that I can share with you, with you and him together. So I, it's not really a good story, but it's how. Gary is in a truck when you, if you ever watch Gary while he's sitting watching, he does not sit still. His feet move back and forth on the floorboards. And I told him if he didn't stop, I was going to have to replace him. And you can actually hear him, you know, his feet going all the time. He never sat still. And uh, he's just a blast to be around. You know, he, he likes to have a good time. 
uh, Amanda's, he loved to eat. He would always take us out to eat and have a good time. And you know how, man, he loves to eat as well. Yeah, that hillbilly ain't turning down free food ever. Yeah, if hey, if you ever go to Wadesboro and go see Gary, go to the local uh, diner. It's like cheers when you walk in there. You know, you walk in and they're, hey, Gary, Mr. Porter. You know, uh, you think he'd, he'd pick up the bill, but we had to pay for him. It was, I can't believe it. <laughs> well, all right. So, something else we like to do. I mean, our big thing here is interacting with fans, is getting yeah. people asking questions and comments about you. So, Mason, what do we got for Mr. Alex Blackwell? Well, we got quite a few here, but I'll go ahead and start off with John Sweely Jr. asking, hey, Alex. What was the fondest moment being at the Jamboree from Hose, Hose Boy up to your ride in Monster Mutt? Yeah, Hose Boy, that's, uh, that's, that's crazy. You know, I, I, I belong to the uh, Central 4x4 Club up in Pennsylvania when I lived there. And uh, uh, special events at the time got a hold of our group and wanted to run the infield. So we were just running the infield. I was really not into the truck thing, and that was before I even drove. It was like – 1996 or 97 or 95, I forget. Uh, and it was so hot up there. Uh, I started hosing down to people because they were asking for it, you know. And um, so I got the name Hose Boy. So I was Hose Boy for six, seven, eight years. And, and then I turned into the truck. And it was kind of cool to be able to drive. Uh, I say that's close to my hometown, 18 miles away. And I had a ton of people there. Um, and that was another weekend. I drove Captain's Curse somewhere. Uh, which was English town. And I came there and drove monster mutt and I was teamed up with Chad Tingler at the time. So it was, uh, it was awesome when you get to get close to home and drive, you know, especially be out in front of everybody. It's because nobody believed I did it until they saw me there. And, you know, and plus uh, uh, monster mutt was, I think C 26. And that was a wheelie and truck, man. I could, uh, I always said like captain's curse, I could wheelie off a pencil and to have Dan Runty and, um, uh, the uh, Chandler come over to me and tell me like, Hey man, that's, that's, that's your cool wheelies, but can we do one? You know, but it was kind of cool to hear them say that because I've always looked up to them guys that uh, uh, when I see him, he, he still hangs out with my brother because my brother still does the infield stuff for uh, special events or family events. I'm sorry. Um, so it's a, uh, it's a lot. Wow. That was a long time ago. Hose boy. That's when I had a mullet. Well, I'm glad that's I'm glad that's where Hose Boy came from because I really thought that had to do with the movies you did there first couple months. No, we we uh we don't talk about that. Okay, sorry, my bad. Next question, Mason. Segwaying on to, off of that, we have one from Nick Miguez asking, "What was your favorite truck to drive?" Oh, favorite truck. Uh, I'm gonna say Captain's Curse only because I have a lot of history in the truck. You know, I've been many many places. I mean, all over the world in that in that cr truck. So. Uh, I'm going to say Captain Curse. Well, I'm going to say you piss me off in that truck a lot of times. Yeah, I'm, I know that's that's the best. You know, <laughs> I've had a great day, up, and this makes it even better. Well, I'll never for, I'll, I'll never forget. We were doing Wichita, Kansas, one year, and we had a bunch of trucks go down. And I was there with my brother. He was driving Bounty, and we had been winning everything. I mean, we had just been cleaning house, doing you know and. Uh, like I said, we had multiple trucks go down, and you were you and Howie were in Tulsa with Rod Schmidt, and they brought you in for the Sunday show to help since we were down on trucks. And I'll yeah. be damned if you didn't come in and whoop our ass all damn day. Pissed me off so bad, I wanted to punch you both right in the throat. Yeah, Back. it was uh, – so that's a crazy story. We were in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, it was a Friday, Saturday show, and, of course, we were tiring, tiring down and loading trailers and got a call from Keith Speller and – if you all don't know, that's who called you at that point and said, you know, what's going on? What do you have to do? And it, it was about two, two o'clock in the morning. And I, I, I didn't even say hello. And I felt so bad. I said, what do you want? You know, because I knew it was good. And he said, I need you to head to, you know, this is, they have trucks go down. We need to add a truck. And, and so we hopped in the rig, drove to where I could drive and, and pull over and get some sleep till the, till I, you know, could get there. And, uh, we, uh, it, I was a crazy deal, man. We were, I was getting dressed. They were unloading the truck, tiring up. I ran out to the truck, jumped in, did the, I think I won three out of four elements, loaded Something back like down the road, didn't even stay there, kept going. 
it was good time. You know, it, it, it helped everybody out. And uh, I was never at that venue before. So that was the first time and last time. Yeah, and it, I just remember we were getting ready for donut contest, and I see Howie spraying the tires because it was the concrete floor. And I said, what are you doing? He said, oh, this is going to help her spin. So I ran and told my brother. I said, hey, you know, there's only one way you're going to compete, so when you go to do it, it's going to go. So I went and grabbed my tire shine and started shining mine. And we still lost, but damn it, we gave you a run. Yeah, don't forget now, uh, I started running lockers front and back. Uh at the beginning of 08 and uh i tell you yeah it's no one wanted to do it everybody was welding their stuff up tom did it and so a few others but i was that actually that locker in the front helped me out of a lot of stuff gave me a, a chance to run a, a lot of good freestyles and uh, you know now everybody's doing it so yeah, yeah it, it was bullshit at the time i'll stop it it was bullshit what else you got mason we have one here from Christian Bialik, and he's asking, hey, Alex, big fan. What was your initial reaction when you heard you're going to be moving into the Megalodon truck? Did it change at all once you saw it in person and started driving it? Yeah, actually, I thought, man, I'm going to be driving a fish. What's this going to look like? Because I didn't see any renditions of it. Of course, when you seen it on, uh, you know, uh, the f uh, Facebook and Monster Jam site, it, you know, it's, it was animated. You don't get the full vision of it. and uh, I was I was in Florida and I seen it and uh, I was like cool it actually looks really neat and then the first show I did with it I was doing morning media and everybody said when you're on the other end of the pod and you can only see the truck driving around it looks kind of cool it looks like I'm stalking somebody you know what I mean my prey so, uh, once I saw it and seen how cool it looked and you know got to give away a couple sets of teeth and some pins it was just like another old truck. Well, I remember you talking about how surprised you were uh, when I saw you when you were driving it. You were saying how surprised you were, how much the kids really loved it, and how they reacted to it. Oh yeah, they they like something new, you know. And and it hey, it looks like a big shark, you know. Who don't love them? As long as they're not biting you, you like them, you know. When they're swimming yeah. in the water, you're always pointing at them, right? Yeah, yeah. You you like them when you're sitting in the stands watching it drive around. You don't like them when you're swimming and you feel one brush your leg and then take your leg. That's right. <laughs> what else you got, Mason? We have one here from Cammy Day asking, Hi, Alex. If you could race against anyone, who would it be past the present? Uh, I, don't, I, uh, I don't know. I'd like to take one more run at Tom Mans. You know what I mean? Uh, especially in the, at the final race or something. Uh, I, just to be on the track, it don't matter. I just want to race. Bringing that with another question from Christian again. Any possibilities of you getting back in the seat, whether that be with Independence or Feld? Well, he'll get in a booster seat when he goes to eat. Does that count? <laughs> Thank you, Did, just we Did we lose him? Gee, I was just Thank kidding. You know, a second. I, was, I was just kidding. I don't know what you did, but he's... Uh... <laughs> well, well, here, I'll... I'll I'll, I'll give you guys something to watch, then. We'll, we'll watch these guys tire up. While, while we, we're we're going to watch other people work while I stand here. And talk on this, one. It's really not part of the deal, but it worked out very nicely for me. There you go. Okay, we're back. <laughs> okay, re-ask the question so I can tell my joke again. Yep, no problem. Okay. So the question was from Chris. It was... Any possibility of you getting back in a seat, whether that be with independence or fell? And I said you would be in a booster seat when you go to eat dinner, but I don't know if that counts. How do you have to be that way? I know. I'm sorry. I had to say. Looks like we're going out with Alex right now. I know he was having some weather issues. Uh, or I may just make it back. It's a good possibility. It's a good possibility. I may have just upset him. So, good job, Mason. Sort of good. Way to go. Is he trying to I'm come back in again? Questions that came up. Is he trying to come back in again? Yeah. 
make sure it's going on right now. He should hop back up here in a little bit, but in the meantime, what else we want to talk about? Well, is there anything special planned you had for this weekend with Ada? Minus, you know, our uh, stuff on Friday. Uh, no, I mean, we're just, I just plan on, I just thought it'd be cool if we could go live. We'll get the trucks out. Like I said, I want to show everybody our new Jekyll and Hyde. Uh, show everybody, you know, a full scale look of the new outlaw. And, you know, if anybody wants to come on and watch live, you know, we can probably take a few minutes to answer, you know, let's ask some tech questions. I mean, if you guys that really want to know about these trucks and how these trucks work, then what better time to ask when you got me and Jim and Austin, all these guys standing right next to one where we can really tell you guys, you know, all about the truck. So, uh, yeah. So like I said, we'll, we'll try and do something like that. Like I said, I don't know how well it's going to work. I mean, we got a lot of work to do on setting up a track and, and uh, getting trucks ready and all that stuff, but we'll give it a shot and hopefully we can pull something off and do something kind of cool for you guys. See, we're getting at least the things are uh, liking that. But uh, with that, we at least got Alex back again. And I'm curious if we should ask the question in fear of him uh, getting upset with you or disconnecting. I won't, I, won't but... make, I won't make the joke again. Okay. So, third time's a charm. Would you want to come back and drive, whether that be with Independence or Felt? Well, if, as long as it works out for me and, and whoever asked me, of course. But, you know. With everything going on, uh, we got to take it, you know, one day at a time, and we'll see what happens from there. Guys, I'm going to step out of here for a quick second. While you guys keep doing that, I'm going to go help him get this truck parked. So you all keep talking, and Mason, you put me in the back for a few. Yeah, you're you're going to get lunch. Don't fool us. So, <laughs> anyways, while he uh, we wait for him, we have a question from Kirk Nagy asking: Out of the three stadium style courses this year that were used, which one do you think was the best and why? Well, I didn't drive this year, so I couldn't, I, I mean, I would say the one I was on, but I wasn't on one this year. Uh, so I would be giving you false information. Um, the stuff overseas that I ran, uh, I liked it. You know, it was, uh, it, you know, I don't, it's hard to ask me that question because as long as I'm driving, it doesn't matter to me. You know what I mean? I get you. We'll switch that comment up there with another one from Chris saying, what would be your favorite city to compete at? I don't know. I have a good time in Vegas. You know, I don't gamble. So, uh, but just to go out and hang out and have a good time, it, it, it was, uh, it's, it, it was good. It was fun there. <laughs> see what else we got. We have one from a Brandon A. Koala Chuck. Not sure if you know him, but he's saying there was never a paint chip or scrape on that cursed chassis. The couple times I was next to it, it looked fresh out of the boot. Yeah, you know, I, I you know, so starting for an independent, in my opinion, uh, was the way for me to start. Uh, it made me appreciate more, um, you know, working for somebody that paid the bill and it was, him and I working together, which I'm talking about Randy Brown. Um, when I did the damage and it was unnecessary, I got told about it and it made me a better driver. Uh, so when I was out to, you know, make a name for myself and curse, I tried to do my best on, you know, saving the equipment, uh, still burn it down when I could and, and have a good time and doing little damage, but still, you know, making my rounds and filling my freestyle time. This one's not much of a question, but want to make sure it was said here from Frank Patelli saying, Alex, I met you at Digger's Dungeon 10 years ago. You're working on Captain's Curse on your day off and to stop and talk with me for about 30 minutes. I've been a fan of you before, but became an even, even bigger fan after. I'll always remember that and appreciate your time. Yeah, that's a... Uh, you know, working at the Diggers Dungeon, it, it's kind of cool because, you know, there's, I don't know, 12 million people a year that go to the beach. It's probably more. I don't know the exact number. And I would work. You know, I I, I love work and I don't know what's wrong with me, but I, I love to work. So I would go into my day off and and just polish and shine and make it look good or just finish what I didn't get done. Um, and 
somebody would say, Hey, and I'd start talking. Uh, and I meet so many, you know, meet so many different people and from ever all over the world. And so crazy that I met a ton of people from Pennsylvania that didn't live far from me and they were just passing through. So, um, it, it's, it was cool working there, uh, getting to see everybody and, and visit and, you know, giving tours when we could. And, uh, you know, it, it's fun there. It's, it, there's a lot going on on the, uh, the Anderson compound. So, uh, if you've never been there, you need to go for a ride. Okay. Cam, you're back in here. No. All right. Thanks for having me. Can you still here? What's that? I was saying, uh, you're back on. Yep, I'm here. I'm here. Uh, thanks for thanks for having me. Uh, okay. Just appreciate to be here. I mean, it's such an honor to be here with Alex Blackwell in his, in his presence. That's such right. Uh, Tried up there. I remember the time I got to hang out with the Pope. That was almost as special as this is right now. Something wrong with you. Yeah, I know. Go ahead to the next question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I know we promised never to bring this question up again, but from Levi Jones, we have Hooters or JT Schmidt. He was on such a good streak, not doing it, but here we are back again, at least one week later, with uh, Cam's most good question. So, uh, Alex, Hooters or JT Schmidt? I, I, I don't go to Hooters, and uh, I don't know what JT Schmidt Schmitz is. JT Schmidt's is the restaurant. It's right across the street from the Aries Hotel in Anaheim. That got a burger bar and grill right across the street. Oh yeah, we uh, uh, two years ago when I was out there in Megalodon when I was teamed up with Adam, uh, me, my girl, uh, her son, and grandma went over there and threw down for a while. So there you go, there you go, Levi. DJ Smith, there you go. Shut up, Levi. <laughs> I and would take in I, I would take an in and out burger right now though. <laughs> I'd go for a right now. <laughs> Anyways, back with the questions. We have one from Brian Anger asking if you could drive any truck past the present, which truck would you pick and why? Well, I've driven quite a bit and the only, there's there's one I really wanted to wanted to drive before I get out of it, you know out of driving and it was son of a digger. I got to test it a few times in the field uh, when we were doing all this EFI stuff before, you know, all the trucks had it. Um, but I got to drive, you know, Grave Digger. I got to drive Legend. Um, and I got to drive, you know, many others, but it would be, there's two, I'm sorry, Max D was one of them. I was asked to drive it one time uh, and I and I couldn't because I didn't think I was going to First, be able to reach the pedals because it was Tom's truck, uh, and second, I, I wasn't, I never drove a left-handed truck except for GD number three, and that was like 15 years ago. Well, hey, I'm, I'm sorry to do this. Uh, I'm, so I'm gonna interrupt real quick, but we got to get loaded up, get headed to the next place. So I'm gonna let Mason finish this up. He's doing a great job, and so I'm sorry I've been so screwed up in this thing. Now, Alex, well, hold on a minute. If you're, I thought you just unload it. Why are you loading up to go to the next place? Well, we got to load up the little tires, load the jack up, and get everything on the trailer so we can go get the trailer where it needs to go. Okay. Don't question. Don't question what I'm doing, son. You just, you just, just worry about you, what you're doing. I, I just didn't know if you knew what you were doing. No, Where's Jimmy I'm, at? Is Jimmy I'm, helping you? No, Jimmy's at home still. Okay. Is Josh helping you? Not yet. He's okay. at he's, he's at Jimmy's home too. Okay. Yeah. Any more questions? Anything else? No, nice talking to you, buddy. I, I miss can you. Send you a list. I can send you a list of everybody's location if necessary, if that'll make you no, feel better. I'm just checking on the people that are supposed to watch after you. That's all. <laughs> yeah. I am on my own tonight. woo -hoo! <laughs> But, Alex, dude, I appreciate you coming on. And, uh, like okay. I said, I'm sorry. sorry I couldn't stay here longer. But, uh, yeah, I actually have work to do, so I'm kind of excited. So. Yeah, that's okay. We didn't need you anyway. Goodbye. Nope. You don't need me. <laughs> so, all right. Glad I can't see you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> well, that was quite an exit from Cam there, but I'll go ahead and bring it back to the questions now. We have one from Cammy Day again, and asking what was your favorite international stop? Um, I'm going to pick 
So my favorite was Australia. Uh, spent three weeks over there and my honey got to go with me. So we had a good time. And then my second favorite was last year. We were in uh, um, England and went to Sweden. And in between there, I stopped in Amsterdam for a few days just to, and my girl was with me again. So uh, Nikki, we had an awesome time and it was my birthday. So uh, I got the, for my birthday last year, I got to go see Metallica, uh, 88,000 people. Uh, it was wow. absolutely unreal. So, uh, and I picked Australia. One, my girlfriend was with me and two, Cami was on the whole tour with us. So we had a good time. <laughs> Sweet. We have a question from the guru himself, Christopher Allen. He's sending in, what is your favorite freestyle move? Well, one is when the truck starts. So that's a plus. Um, I don't know if I can name one. Uh, you know, it's, I, I used to like bicycling the, the truck when, you know, when it was just sidewall stuff. Now Ryan and all these other guys are, and girls are doing crazy tricks. So uh, what I did 10 years ago is that, you know, who does that anymore? So, uh, if I could drive, that would be my freestyle move, just being able to drive. Nice. For me, still, it's always been like a slap wheelie or – I know Cam's not here to agree with us, but i like to say for him, too, it would just be a truck starting up. But with that, one question we always like to ask our guests right before, you know, as we come to a close, is their favorite road story, whether that be from the past or present. So for you, whether it's with Independence or with Feld, actually, so what was your favorite road story? Oh, wow. So back when I started, we used to, you know, drive the rig and then, you know, go to a show, do the show and then drive, you know, across country and drive the rig again. I remember uh, leaving. Um, we first year we did Syracuse, New York, and it was four or five uh, Feld rigs and some independent rigs going towards Vegas and uh, just snowing like crazy. And everybody's like, yeah, oh, let's take the Southern route. Let's take the Southern route. And Dustin Brown, who was Dennis's mechanic a long, long time ago. Uh, and now he's a, uh, a manager down at the Florida shop. Uh, but he, uh, he used to smoke like a freight train. And I tell you why, I never seen so many cigarettes flying out of a semi window before. And we get to, uh, you know, going up over the pass and in Colorado and it is snowing like crazy. Mike wine, Dustin Brown, uh, Bucky was with, uh, in another rig behind us. And, uh, just, I love driving. I, I didn't like stopping until we got to where we were. So, uh, that was, it. I know those guys remember it. And Opie was with Dustin in the, uh, in the, you know, the digger, uh, trailer, the black one. And I was in a white Feld rig. So, uh, that story, I'll, I'll never forget. It was so much fun. <laughs> That's awesome. Good times with Blackwell. As I'm checking the last bit of comments here, seeing if we could end on a good one right now. Well, looks like Cam actually just commented in saying, what's well, your favorite Star Wars character? But since it was Cam... It's up to you whether you want to answer that one or not, since he's uh, not here to question? give me what, what was the question? Your favorite Star Wars character. Oh, to stop it. <laughs> Something's wrong with him. He's just been itching to get back to work, probably. Then again, not here with this input. So, well, with that, looks like we've at least been able to get all of our questions answered. So, don't mean to cut it short here, but I'd like to thank you, uh, Alex, for coming on with us. Cam as well, even though it's a little short-lived, but it's been an awesome time with you, Alex, and uh, hope to see you again, if not on the down the road somewhere, uh, at least at a show sometime. Yeah, I'll, I'll be around. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just not in a truck anymore, so uh, I'll look for you. Don't worry. You'll see me. <laughs> All right, we'll make sure to keep an eye out for you. Thanks for uh, right. being on again. No problem, man. Thanks for having me. Of course. Thank you. Well, don't mean to cut it short just a little bit here, but with that, we're going to go ahead and close out our uh, podcast here. Again, I'd like to thank our sponsors for this podcast. We have 
course, Spur Hot Sauce. It is a local Florida-based business where the Southwest meets the Southeast in a clash of hot and tangy flavors. When you want to spice up your next meal, think of Spur Hot Sauce and make sure to give them a like and contact on Facebook or Instagram and tell MonsterCast sent you. We also have Monster Truckinator TV, the place to go on Facebook for all things new and old Monster Truck related. And with that, I know Cam's not here to exactly say who we're going to have on Sunday, but he mentioned it earlier in the podcast. We're going to be having none other than Carolina Crush's own Gary Porter on. So I'd like for you guys to stay tuned and check in with us. Otherwise, make sure to check us out on YouTube, Spotify, and Podbean. And we still have yet more action to come. Make sure, again, tune with us on Friday with Cam and Austin as they unload. And you get to check out the new trucks from 2Xtreme. And with that, we will see you guys in the next episode. Catch it.